So actually guys, this is where all the action happens. This is our coffee and tea station. Uh, mainly tea at the moment. You got your honey, got your cream, you got your PG tips, and your Thai foo. And then more importantly, this is our mama station. So for those that are not familiar with mama, if you really want to know about Thai culture, this is mama. This is not an advertisement for mama, by the way, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about Mama and its importance. Its important role as the bedrock of Thai culture in the modern day. Hi. My damn Swimak! This looks like you're wearing mascara. So let's talk about Mama a second. I didn't know anything about Mama. In England, we call this a pot noodle. Yeah. Pot noodle. So why is Mama important? So important in Thai culture. Well is easy to cook, fast to eat, and it's cheap. It's a uh, help people like, you know, if they have money, <laughs> like to keep until end of the month, that's what we call. It's like uh, if you're working and then you spend money for something else, you know, and uh, you still have the rest of the month that to live on. So Mama will help you to go on until enough demands. So it's a bit of a joke, like if, if I had no money and I was talking to a friend and he said, oh, are you going out this weekend? And he said, no, I, I, you tea ban give Mama, staying at home eating Mama. So like, it's like uh, no money and then uh, all that they can afford to pay is Mama. <laughs> so I think that one, that one's 14 baht, isn't it? Yeah. This one 14 baht, but most of Thai people, they, they don't like to uh, pay for this. This one is just like when you go somewhere and then you stop in 7-Eleven or something and then you buy it. You mean in this, in this packaging? Yeah, and then uh, you just put, add water and then you can have it uh, in the car. But to get a cheaper one mm. is just it's 6 baht. I think now the price is more expensive, maybe 7 or 8 baht now. I don't know the price, but this is what Thai people they buy. Six baht. Six baht, yeah. yeah. He's shopping, so I don't know. <laughs> he know the price. <laughs> and what else have we got in there? Get that. But in the village, they sell eight, eight baht. This is our Mama station, guys. Station for Ryan. <laughs> for Ryan. I mean, we're eating Mama a lot more now. I've come to really like it. Before, mm -hmm. for the first. 14 years living here, I never liked it, but for some reason. First time I eat, because at night time, sometimes I'm hungry, so I want to have some spare. So I make it for myself, and then he say, why you like to eat mama? And then he say, you have to try. <laughs> and then he, he tried the non-spicy one, and then he like it. And he have every day in the morning. <laughs> I like it, and it's practically free. It's like you, you have a lunch, but it doesn't cost anything, yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so let's uh, open one and show what's inside. So in this pot here, it's like a pot noodle, like in England we have pot noodle. Yeah, we're not advertising here. We're not working with Mama. But I just think it's an, I think it's probably a very unvlogged topic. Like uh, Mama is very important for students. <laughs> when you stay in the dorm, you know, like a dormitory, and then uh, this will keep you going, <laughs> like morning or evening after you study hard. So your sister's in university now, isn't she? So she'll be eating mama every day. Not every day, but it's like uh, they have to have in the house. So what's you got inside? This so one is it? sauce. So, so is that spicy sauce or? This one not spicy. Sauce and this kind of like um, garlic, fried garlic. A little garlic freeze dried meat. Freeze dried mm -hmm. meat. More. More. Freeze dried pork. <laughs> and this one is well, powder. Stock. Uh, and then you just Except, So we got stock, we got chili on this side, chopped chili. This is like a it's like an oil and some kind of fat, I think. Uh, and then you have a fork that you can open up like this. I keep over me to tea. <laughs> no, I, not always. It could, in England we have pot noodle, but we don't have... I don't oh, think yeah. it comes with a fork. It doesn't it's come with... Ready. It's like this, but you just put one of these in. It doesn't have all this other stuff. Oh, 
Salah. From what I remember, it's been 15 years since I've been in England, so. I think this is my first time that I see him have mama. <laughs> so, so uh, they have like a, like a noodle. Noodles in here. Yeah. You just add water, and then put all the salt. But in England, mama is going to cost 100 baht. Yeah. Maybe, when we live in Bali, I bought this about 50 baht in Bali. Yeah. Yeah. From Thailand. Yeah, about 50 baht. But Thai people, they love this thing. It's like, how do like, tom yam kung, tom yam kung, spicy, but tasty. Not, not that much that spicy. The Ryan, he, he doesn't like it. So this is your favorite, isn't it? It's not good to have every day. It's not healthy. <laughs> okay, you can have twice a week or something like that, you know. Only you really broke. Then you can have it ready. I eat it every day. <laughs> you broke. I'm broke. <laughs> Why do you call it mama? Huh? Come here. Brand. Just the brand. Brand. Yeah, brand. No meaning behind it though, like mummy or mother or mayor. No, mama is the brand of this noodle. They have different brands. And my favorite one is from Korea. It's very rich, spicy one. And it's expensive. That one expensive, like 50 baht, because it's import, you know. I think the noodles, instant noodles, is popular in Asian country. This is the brand uh, from Korea. This is a brand from Korea, but actually I don't, I don't like this thing. Never tried it. You like the black, you like the black spicy one? Black spicy, three times spicy. Very, very spicy. And, uh... And I would try this before he Ryan he just bought everything that he saw. <laughs> well I like to, I like to keep our mama station. I like to keep it interesting. So I always pick and mix. And mix up, mix it long. It don't make a lot. <laughs> so now you know about mama. And if you're ever broke in Thailand, you just eat mama every day. In Western Mila. Now now um go saying mama. Mama mama <laughs> mama. 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 You're right. What's up, kid? We was only gone five minutes, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Do you want some mama? Do you want some mama? So, if you're a broke in Thailand, you just eat mama. Mama is a part of the the culture here. Um, I don't know if it's ever been explained in such detail on a vlog before, but it's uh, a cheap way to enjoy. It's just like our pot noodle in, in the UK. Pot noodle. I'm sure you've got the equivalent in the USA as well. Not healthy. <laughs> not healthy, but delicious. Not, not unhealthy, though. Not healthy. It's full of salt. It's like instant thing. Yeah. <laughs> so at the moment we're busy prepping for New Year, the New Year's party. I'm sure all of you around the world are as well. We've got Damo's sister here and all of the kids are here too. Otis has just finished school for this term. I've got a dad over here washing the motorbike and uh, I tell you that motorbike is so old. It's been around the block, been fixed many, many times. So all the kids are here. Yai is here. Damo's here. All the kids are dressed as Santas. Looking very cute for New Year. Oh! <laughs> Cuties. And we got all the other kids over here. This must be the trial run for for testing the dress up. We got Owen and Sa, Nala, and then we got all the other kids over here. It's a full house, guys. They also they're happy because they all get presents at New Year as well. So it's not just presents at Christmas. It's presents at New Year. A lot of them will come home. There's Damo's sister over there. She's come home for. The new year to spend it with family, with mum 
her dad. Her other sisters always send like big bunches of money and presents for Yai, for the kids. Yeah, I think it's going to be a nice, a good celebration this year. Um, have you noticed how comfortable everybody is with the camera these days? I don't know, you probably wouldn't notice, but it is funny how the camera has become such a part of our life. It's just become normal for me to kind of film. Or it's just him filming or it's Damo filming. Um, it's just become, it's become quite normal. And I don't think it interrupts, you know. We don't stage things. So it's not like everybody kind of has to change their natural behaviour in order for, for the camera to roll. The camera is really just capturing things as they are. Um, particularly with Tiss, we didn't want it to be like a, an influence. You know, we wouldn't want him later growing up being like, oh, there's always this camera around. Um, of course, for 95% of the time, there's no camera around. You wouldn't think it when you watch these vlogs because you think that there's always a, a camera on. But remember, there's only 40 minutes a week out of all of the minutes in a week that you have the camera rolling. So I don't think it's been a negative influence uh, on the kids and I don't think with the family, I don't think they're um, at all uncomfortable in any way. In fact, the funny thing is um, they all watch the vlog. The whole family watch the vlog and they all laugh and they smile at it and they clap at it. And obviously some of them they, they don't know what's going on because they don't speak English, although we have the Thai subtitles now. Um, but they all laugh and they joke and they watch it and they love it and especially a mum She really loves it Capturing all these moments and of course I think for grandma for Yai and for the older ones They love the fact that all of their life this life will be documented for when they're not around and the other kids can look back on the vlog and be like Oh, there's grandma. There's there's granddad because we forget don't we as we get older we forget our grandparents and we forget what it was like and um I think the vlog is a nice way for them to look back and I think that's why her mum and her dad they like the fact that we vlog and we capture all of these moments. Um, sometimes they'll cry at the vlog, there's some parts of the vlog that are quite emotional and you know there's Uncle Monk's funeral or there's diff different things captured um, that they really enjoy. So I think it's been a net positive and of course the membership from this channel also helps everybody because it pays for the electricity bill for the whole farm and it pays for the internet for the farm uh, it pays for the water because that's indirectly the electricity so it actually it's a net positive okay you've got a camera around um, it's a net positive uh, in, in many many different respects so it's and who would have thought we'd be on YouTube because we're not really YouTube types of people you know before youtube i didn't even have any social media set up i didn't even have any facebook set up or anything like that it's uh just very weird for us to to kind of be online and yeah they've become they become very used to it and it's become part of our life now and i think it's had nothing but benefits of course there's stuff that sometimes you capture that's too private and you can get rid of that in editing um Sometimes, you know, Dan will say, oh, I don't want to be filmed. And sometimes I don't feel like filming. I don't feel like being on, on camera as well. So there is that. But that's just things we mitigate. Living this type of, of lifestyle. And I think at the moment, things have never been better, guys, to be honest. Everybody's healthy. Everybody's happy. We're coming into a new year, which is somewhat less difficult. Because remember last year, we were having the baby... We just set up the pig enclosure. We just finished building the house. We just moved back from Bali from my corporate job. We had loads and loads of stuff going on. It was a very, very stressful time. Whereas this new year, the only thing really going on is the farmhouse. We're going to take a little walk to now. The farmhouse renovation, which we haven't been able to start because a lot of the ties, they take breaks at new year. So they're all busy, you know, celebrating and drinking rice whiskey and enjoying themselves and so sort of fair play so we haven't we're in no rush to start the renovation of course we've cleaned it out and whatnot but we we're in no rush to start the renovation for it we we can wait and our plan is to come after new year now my dad and my sister are visiting as well so they're going to be here in the next two weeks 
two and a half to yeah, it's two and a half weeks they will be here and arriving so you'll get to meet my dad and my sister my dad's staying for three weeks on the farm and my sister's just staying for a few days before she goes off to Koh Samui me and my sister have been away from the UK and away from home for many many years she left quite young too I left at 20 she left quite young and my dad still lives in the UK and I think he, he would love to live out here but I think it's too hot for him so he says so you're going to get his view on rural Thailand living he's in his mid to late 50s now my dad so he's getting a bit older and he's going to give you his opinion I'm sure I'll give you the honest opinion of what he thinks of the farm and whatnot so yeah we've got all that coming up for for the vlog and an insight of we've got another couple of youtubers visiting as well so there is always something going on it seems like the schedule is never kind of empty we've been kind of been waiting since we moved here three years three years ago i've been waiting for a time where we can just go right let's do nothing let's not youtube let's not youtube let's not do anything for a few weeks and it's just never happened because it's always one thing after another there's always something going on and you think oh i'll just stick the camera on and and capture it so i uh, we're gonna have our new year's vlog as well which i hope is gonna give a little bit of a recap of everything that's gone on so here we are we've arrived at the farmhouse which i guess will be the key focus of next year's vlog is the development of this land and this building and let's turn it around let's make it into something nice although as i mentioned before budgets we're not we're not dumping huge amounts of capital into this straight away because well we don't need to and i'd rather take it slow than you know dump a lot of money into it oh there's a cat again it always runs out <laughs> i think it lives up there and then when it hears somebody it runs out so we're not dumping huge amounts of capital in it like literally the plan is every month to do maybe twenty thousand bahts worth of work on it so if you live in thailand you know that's not a lot of money twenty thousand baht you know sometimes if there's a big project we might stretch to fifty thousand for a, a big part of the project but most months i, I want to kind of do it bit by bit so you hardly even notice it breaking the bank and develop it and do a lot of work ourselves there's a lot we can do we can paint we can do some hard graft and get this one done thanks for joining us today guys hope you're all well and We've got our New Year's vlog coming out next, and then we've got next year, which I think is going to be a fun year. Thanks for subscribing, liking, liking the content, and we hope you've, been, you've enjoyed the insight into Mama on today's vlog. So be well, everybody. Take care.